Welcome to Stock Shots. Tonight, our guest is trader, teacher, and author, Miss Tony Hansen. For the full version of the video, please go to www.stockshotstv. That's www.stockshotz.tv. Thank you. We're here tonight with trader, teacher, and author, Ms. Tony Hansen. Tony, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us on Stock Shots tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Tony, we'd like to start the show by asking you how you got into trading and how you learned the methods that you use on a daily basis. Okay. Well, there's a little bit of a long story there, so I'll make it the brief version, Cliff Notes version. Um, I actually had intended on becoming an archaeologist, and I worked for the Office of the State Archaeologist uh, where I grew up for about five years. And my significant other at the time, though, he was only interested in becoming a trader. That's all he had ever wanted to do. So this was about the time that online trading first really became available to the individual person. It was back in the mid-'90s, and he started getting into swing trading. And I'd come home from the lab or the field, you know, depending on whatever I was doing, and he would be just pouring over all of these stocks, trying to figure out what stocks would go the next day, you know, what would be the strong sectors and the most momentum. And I'm somebody that is really intrigued with puzzles. Like I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out things like all of the Mensa books and that type of stuff. You know, that's how I spent my free time doing logic puzzles and that type of thing. So when I looked at what he was trying to do, I kind of approached it as, well, this is just a puzzle. You know, I can help him out, help try to figure this out myself. And um, I had lent him some money to start trading, and I saw how he was doing. And he was struggling. I mean, you know, as with any trader, when you really don't know what you're doing, it's something that's new. And back then, there wasn't a lot for education, really, at the time either. There were a couple of books out, but it's not like there is now where, you know, you can Google something on the Internet and find out a lot of the basics. And so I went into it basically just knowing you could buy, like, a three- to five-day pullback. And I kind of started with just making a list of the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 100, and I would just make a guess of where I thought, what direction I thought it would go the next day. And then I started, you know, kind of narrowing down, well, why did I think it would go that way the next day? Um, I never read any trading books or any articles or anything like that to learn how to trade. I completely taught myself by following the market activity because I knew that, Basically, charts are just a representation of human emotions, and that's, you know, what I studied going through school through anthropology and, you know, political science and all that. So I knew that it could be represented in a chart format, and you could have an idea of how people were feeling about the market or a stock just by looking at the charts. So I kind of developed a, a concept of, you know, well, what are the building blocks of market patterns? I didn't really focus on things like learning what a coupled handle was or learning what a bull flag was. I wanted to know I was seeing all these patterns that people were telling me were bull flags, but they were failing. And for me, there had to be some reason behind why is this thing that looks like a bull flag, that looks like what they're telling me is a bull flag, worked this time and then it failed this time. So I kind of went in and broke down like the activity within each of the patterns to give me an idea of where the market's going. And um, it came down to about basically five things. I'm looking at you know support and resistance levels. I'm looking at momentum or pace, which is just you know how fast is a security moving compared to how it was moving before that. And I'm looking at volume activity, um, trend placement, trend development, as well as um, correction periods in the day because I discovered that there were certain times of the day where you would get reversals or strong breakouts or that type of thing. And it kind of developed from there. And eventually I, I quit working at the lab and started trading full time. That is great. That is a dream that many of us hope to realize one day. <laughs> 
let me ask the million dollar question because we get so many viewers that that send us emails and say, "How much do I need to quit my job and begin a full time trading career, and how much money can I expect to make annually?" Right, that is an incredibly good question because everybody wants to know that, but in reality, nobody can answer that question for you. Every single trader, every single person that comes into the market is going to have different levels of what they need to make, um, what their personality is best suited for. A lot of times, you'll come into trading and you'll think that you're going to trade with one methodology, and by the time you reach the point where you're actually consistent, you're trading completely different types of setups, completely different types of markets and time frames as you thought you would be doing when you first came into it. And everybody has a different personality. Some people are more risk adverse. Some people, you know, they're really conservative. Some people are really aggressive. And they can make different amounts. Some people are comfortable taking losses. Like um, my ex, for instance, he would lose money on about 70% of his positions. But his losses were very, very small. And so compared to the 30% that were making money, he was really not losing much and not having very significant drawdowns at all. But for me, I cannot do that. I need to be right like 80, 85% of the time. So I'm very conservative. I'm very picky in the types of setups I'm taking. I only have about four to six trades, well, maybe four to eight trades that I take per day in terms of like a day trading capacity, and that's between futures and stocks. So maybe I'll take, you know, four in stocks and four in futures, for instance. And for me, I have still very, very steady growth, but it's not something that is explosive. I'm not comfortable in cre uh, taking a huge amount of risk on my portfolio, whereas other people, they might be. So really, there's no one answer that you can give for that question because every single person is going to be completely different. And I've been trading full time for almost 11 years now. And I've worked with thousands and thousands of traders. None of them ends up trading like another person. So you're going to have to go into it thinking, you know, really thinking through. Are you really ready to do this for one thing? I mean, you have to come into it um, being prepared in terms of financially, so you ask the question, you know, how much does a person need when they come into trading? If you're day trading stocks, for instance, you're probably going to need about thirty to forty thousand dollars. If you're trading futures, you can do about fifteen thousand dollars and make a pretty good living just using that. Um, so, you know, those are kind of like the bare minimums that I would say that you would need for those type of accounts. But you also have to figure out the learning curve. It's going to take you probably about two years before you really reach a level where you feel like you understand what's going on and you have a really good grasp of what's going on. So when you start to have drawdowns, you're able to break that quickly and not let it really hurt you. A lot of people, they'll go in cycles where they'll have like three months of gains and then they'll just hit a stopping point. They'll hit a roadblock. Oftentimes it's because they get sloppy in their methodology, so they're taking more risks than they used to or not really following their methods as well because they're getting greedy or just you know overly confident in, in themselves and not really paying attention to their rules. Or, you know, the the, mic or the market has changed, and so you're hitting a different cycle. So 